It was just three weeks ago we were talking about the Super Bowl champions. Yet today we're already set to begin conference tournaments and crown those champions. Hey, how are you? Jason Norwitz. Glad you could join us in the paint here on February 26th, 2007. Plenty coming your way on some of the tournaments that begin later this week. But let's start with one taking place in the city of the Super Bowl losers. That being the Big Ten tournament and that one seed Sunday wrapped up by Ohio State. With a one-point win over Wisconsin, the Buckeyes not only guaranteed the number one spot, they also moved to the top spot of the AP poll for the first time since John Havlicek and Jerry Lucas were on the floor with a sub coming off the bench. A guy maybe you heard of, a guy named Bobby Knight. That was back in 1962. These Buckeyes less experienced, but just as talented with Conley, who at the game winner, you know Odin, Daquan Cook as well. Three of the top four scorers are freshmen. Buckeyes a great shot to be an overall number one seed unless they lose their last regular season game at Michigan next Saturday and then maybe an even an early exit in the Big Ten tourney. Otherwise, they're set to go. But here's a list of the other possible one seeds. See their overall records and strength of schedules. It'd be tough to not give a UCLA team a one seed in North Carolina as well. A team that beat Ohio State, so too did Florida, although the Gators have lost twice in their last three games, but both on the road. Maryland was a one seed when it won the national title in 2002. Not going to happen this year, but with a win Sunday over UNC, the Terps do have their first five-game conference winning streak since that national championship season. The team on the bubble two weeks ago has played itself in. Top 15 RPI and earlier season wins against Michigan State and Illinois. The Terps will make the field after missing the last two years. And while many will say the best basketball is played in that conference, the most exciting tournament may actually take place in St. Louis. The Missouri Valley Tourney tips off Thursday with the championship set to take place Sunday afternoon on CBS. Now, Southern Illinois, the one seed after going 15-3 in conference, trying to become the first team in four years to win consecutive conference tournaments. But keep this in mind. The top seed in this tourney hasn't won it since Illinois State did it in 1998. Last year, four Valley teams got in. This week could very well determine the number for this NCAA tournament. Meanwhile, the Colonial also set to go. All 12 teams make it, and from there, works just like the Big East tourney, so the top four seeds get by. VCU, ODU, Hofstra, and Drexel, the top four. None of those, the two that made the NCAA tourney last year. That, of course, being George Mason, the number six seed in this year's tourney, and UNC Wilmington, this year's 10 seed. None of this year's top four, though, have won an NCAA tournament game since Drexel beat Memphis as a 12 seed in 1996. Watch out for this conference tournament, though. It is a dangerous conference. All right, time for a couple of quick hits. Teams to look out for if they win their conference tournaments. Marist hasn't been to the dance since 1987. Dave McGarity was the coach then. His son now plays for the Red Foxes, number one seed in the MAC, led by one of the best backcourts in the nation, Jared Jordan, Will Winnington. They can score and pass but they also have a seven-footer to go inside. And the America East Tournament also begins this week. Vermont, the one seed, Albany, the two, yet both could be dangerous for a higher seed in the big dance. The Catamounts, a good combination of inside and outside with Trimboli and Trapani and Holm as well. The Great Danes, on the other hand, just like last year's 16 seed, can shoot the three, over 38% from beyond the arc. On top of that, led by Jamar Wilson, last year's America East Player of the Year, probably will be this year as well. He leads the team in scoring assists and rebound, so he can carry the team. He doesn't have to because of the word we always use in the paint, experience. The team has a lot of it. Top five scores, juniors and seniors. All right, so there you have it, folks, this edition of In the Paint. But don't forget, next time with Bill Raftery beginning Thursday, March 1st, tournaments begin that day. Don't forget, we're always on demand here or on YouTube. And until next time, I'm Jason Harwood. Take care.